Good afternoon viewers of Seven News Television. Once again, we are happy because you guys are over there watching us direct or live. This is your program experts. Cameroon for some time has been passing some economic quagmire, some economic malaise, or you call it a quick financial malaise, whereby money doesn't circulate. A lot of difficulties. Business people are crying. Mothers as well as fathers find it very difficult to provide for their children. Why? Because the partnership agreements with other countries might not be that fruitful, or the structural adjustment plan of the country is not the best. With us at this point in time, as a specialist in economic, the coordinator of an international organization Enterprise Europe Network Cameroon, Chase, Sandra, Achare, Bate, Bissom. Yeah, Sandra, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon, uh, Bissom. I'm happy to be on your program again. Yeah, I know last time you were like a bit disappointed. Uh, I mean, it happens in our economy. We have no control over over electricity so sometimes when it happens we're well, like okay let's take it and then see how to ameliorate to move forward okay sandra well, can you tell me or tell our viewers who is madame sandra chare and the organization she's uh, coordinating in cameroon Okay, uh, sandra achare bisong ipus bate um, married mother and uh, i am the regional director for ecam ECAM, which is Entreprise du Cameroon, which is the biggest SME organization, biggest SME support organization in Cameroon. In French, they will call it Organisation Patrona. Okay. So you have many um, SME support organizations, but ECAM actually is the, the biggest in Cameroon. We cover all the sectors. And in ECAM, we have a project with the European Union since three years ago called Enterprise Europe Network, which I equally coordinate. Yeah, so right. I uh, accumulate the functions for ECAM for the Central Region and Enterprise Europe Network Cameroon. So in a nutshell, that is uh, Achare Bate. Uh, we are talking today on the topic Cameroon Europe Economic Cooperation. As a specialist, what is the better cooperation that Cameroon has to do with the European countries? Um, Cameroon, firstly, the world is, has become a global village. You can you can operate alone. You need uh, to sign partnerships with other countries for you to be able to develop. Especially if you are a developing country, you know you need to step up your game to be able to get to the level where you can you you can sign proper partnerships with uh, with other countries. So yes, signing Cameroon signing part partnership agreements with Europe is uh, is something which is called for. Is something which is encouraged. We should be encouraged. Is something which we should be able to look forward to. Unfortunately, it's not um, very green on the other side in spite of, of the fact that this partnership should be able to bring us you know a lot of good things should be able to make our economy to 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 evolve or to improve it's not always green on the other side because you know a, a partnership or an agreement has to be done by two people who are kind of like on the same scale yeah unfortunately cameroon and our uh, european union partners are not on the same scale so it kind of makes our agreement very, very uh, stressful where we as Cameroonians have that impression, not really an impression, but we as, as Cameroonians suffer a lot because, you know, we are on the disadvantaged side and most of the, the agreements, you know, in the partnership do not really benefit us because we are not uh, ready, you know, for that kind of partnership agreement. So, as a specialist uh, in economy, though you studied uh, Manage. project management in your MS, yes, C program, and uh, 
let me find out something from you, from a project manager to economics. It was a transition. What's the transition? The, I think the transition is, is something which we are working on. Unfortunately, there are lots of projects that have been put in place, but you know the government has this its um its shortcomings where it doesn't inform the public a lot you know on what has been put in place to be able to cause us a transition from one state to another the economic partnership agreement between cameroon and the european union is something that has been signed you know or has been on the negotiating table for a couple of years and was ratified two years ago okay for us to be able to get to that level where we can actually do business with the eu lots of programs have been put in place which cameroonians are not aware of for example you have ANO, which is the normalization you know and standards and normalization agency it's one of the projects that was actually put in place by the european union together with the cameroon government to be able to help cameroonian smes you know to be up to standards to do business in the european union and even in con countries uh that are not part of the European Union. You have the upgrading office, which is called the Bureau de Mise à Niveau. It's also another program together with PACOM. And you have many other programs that were put in place. Some were funded, you know, with the EU, some were funded by the government. But all of these are programs that were put in place for our transition, for us to get to that level where we can actually speak as equal partners, you know, with the companies from the EU. You are talking about ECAM. What is the mission and the vision of ECAM uh, in relation to the economic of Cameroon? Let me put it that way. ECAM, uh, the mission of ECAM actually is to improve the business climate for small and medium-sized enterprises in Cameroon. That's okay. our mission. And we believe that if SMEs put themselves together, if SMEs can have one voice, they can be able to tackle the problems which they have together. For example, if you are alone in your field and you're facing difficulties, but yet you cannot, your voice cannot be heard. If you are 10, if you're 20, if you're a thousand, the government will take you more seriously. Because sometimes it's difficult for the government to hear complaints coming from left and from right. Most of the times these complaints come differently. They have different forms. They have different formats so our idea was SMEs come together you know they come together as one and they have one voice one voice which is strong enough for the government to hear them one voice which is strong enough for the National Assembly to hear them one voice which is strong enough for the international organization to hear them so that when we are tabling their problems we table a general problem which is void of emotion which is void of any you know other kind of um, of um of complexes which people might have but it's a problem that is targeted to getting a solution so that actually is the reason that of ecam and how many members make up ecam uh for members we have we, we're counting 600 members 600 members and a lot more sympathizers we call them sim sympathizers because we have them in our database but because of the structure of their of the organizations, because the structure of their companies, they are not in uh, they are not well structured to be able to pay their membership dues. Okay. So because our primary motive is not really financial, is be, being able to form that strong force, we still consider them like a camp members, although they don't pay men membership. It's true that there are certain activities that they will not directly benefit from. But you know, if we're doing the lobbying and the advocacy at the level of the ministries, we won't say we're doing it for a camp members, we're doing it for SMEs in general. Okay. So yes, in our portfolio, we have 600 and something registered members and maybe over a thousand uh, SMEs that are, we will consider them sympathizers. You're talking of able to pay their contribution or their dues. How much is a dues a year? Okay, uh, before I talk about how much is their dues a year, I would want us to understand something. A CAM is not funded by the government okay. in any way. A CAM is not funded by the government. We do not accept any funding from the government. So we try to get our funding uniquely from the small and medium sized enterprises. Reason being that. If the government gives you their money, then they dictate how you yeah, run, it. you know, on your day-to-day -day activities. We cannot be doing advocacy for SMEs okay. and at the same time taking money from government when government is the main person we're doing the advocacy to. Okay. 
Okay. So we do not receive any subventions from government and we do not receive any direct payments from government whatsoever so that at least each time that we are talking, we are talking from a position of strength. So uh, the, our finances is mainly from the contributions that the members or that the companies themselves make and it's 200,000 francs a year payable in different installments according to how the SMEs feel comfortable. How, what's, what are the criteria you use in selecting your members? We don't have uh, specific criteria in selecting our members. You just have to be a small and medium-sized enterprise in Cameroon. We, the fact that uh, the definition of small and medium-sized enterprise is so vast, yeah, yeah. it makes it difficult for us because, you know, some uh, world definitions would say an SME is per the per capita income. Mm -hmm. Some would say it's per the number of employees. Okay. So we don't get into those polemics. We don't get into the polemics of how much you have. All we're interested in knowing is that are you a company? Do you have a business? Do you have a business idea? Mm -hmm. And then we can be able to accompany you, you know, to be able to make your business better. So you, the only condition that we have is that you are a company registered in Cameroon. We are talking about uh, Cameroon and Europe Economic Cooperation, and we are talking of small and medium sized enterprises in Cameroon. You know, Europe. America has heavy weights, small and medium sized enterprises, and Cameroon has a lesser weight. How can the two go together? Uh, that, that, that's a, a major challenge that we have. And we are trying to work out different strategies, you know, to be able to 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 solve that problem. Yeah. Because, like you said, an SME in the U.S. and SME in Europe would never be compared to an SME in Cameroon. We are trying to see um, how we can put people in clusters to be able to better manage their business. Let me give an example of, of, of how the cluster can look like. If you are, for example, dealing with, um, I don't know, maybe fab uh, fabricating uh, tables. Yeah. If you're alone, first of all, your, 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 your supply will not be able to... to to market. meet the demand of the foreign market yeah, that's true. but if you can put yourselves together not only the people fabricating already if maybe you have a hundred people manufacturing you know first of all your supply becomes bigger yeah. but also we don't want to, to limit the the SMEs just to the manufacturing we want to do it for the whole value chain it means that we put you together from the level of the person who goes out there to get the wood the person who has the raw material, the person yeah. who has the nails, and so that we put all of you together, the whole value chain into a cluster. So it kind of becomes an industry for the manufacturing of tables. At that time, we are sure that because we have expertise that comes from a little everywhere, we are sure of the quality, mm -hmm. we are sure of the quantity, and we are sure you know that it can respond to the international market. It's a system that we're trying to work, work with. We, we are trying to get some partnerships with certain banks. We've already signed a couple. We are trying to discuss with the European Union to see how you know to, 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 to bring out this, this strategy because it's true that they have tried different methods you know of doing clusters over, over the time and they haven't worked. For example, there was the uh, pay the SP, which was the program that pre du secteur privé, mm -hmm. which was actually a program for clusters, it didn't work. So we don't want to get into a situation where we have to duplicate what has already mm -hmm. failed. Yeah. So we're trying to do a lot of groundwork, a lot, a lot of field studies on what can work. But the main idea is p putting people together because it doesn't matter how much financing you give one company, it will never really be able to to meet the demands of the international market. Madam Bisson, don't you think it's because uh, of lack of cooperation amongst the small and medium-sized enterprises in Cameroon, that's why it never worked at all? Uh, lack of cooperation, I would say yes, and at the same time, I would say no. Because I back yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes, because it's true that we, in our Cameroonian context, in our Cameroonian way of doing things, companies have been found not to agree with themselves. Yeah. But I also believe that if we had a society, if we had an economy which was well structured, mm. because I don't think that we have different behavioral patterns than people in other countries. The only thing is that we don't have, you know, the structures that guide us to be able to do business together. Let me give an example. I enter into a partnership with you. Mm -hmm. 
a normal human being will always have that tendency of wanting to double cross his partner, his partner yeah. but if we have laws and, and and policies that are put in place where you know if i double cross this person i will not go away with it mm -hmm. it makes it easier for us to do business business is that it's not about emotion so it's not it's not about me loving you but we have to have those laws that govern mm -hmm. us you know and i think that is what we are really lacking in cameroon in terms of our legislation in terms of the implementation of the policies that we have businessmen know that it's easy for them to get into partnership and down the line someone declares bankruptcy and he goes away you know with, with whatever he's owing his partner so that makes the trust or the distrust easy to be implemented in cameroon so that's why i said yes and no Yes, it's a natural phenomenon, but in other societies, they have found ways of putting laws in place where you know, however it is, my money will never get lost. Here, you talk of laws being put in place. That sounds very interesting to me. And I want to make us understand that conflict among the so-called business people in Cameroon has been a hindrance to the progress of our community or society today. Will you bear with me accept that as well? Yes, of course it is. It's a very, very big problem. It's, uh, it's something that we, we try to, to solve at an informal level. Okay. You know, as uh, employers, organizations, or as SME support organizations, we try to carry out that role of doing mediation. Where if we have SMEs, you know, in our, in, our, in our portfolio, if they have problems, why not? We try to bring them to the table to see how we can discuss with them, to see how they can get to a common agreement you know and then uh sort out their issues because we realize that most of the problems that we have in cameroon are problems of communication all right problems of communications where people get into problems not necessarily because of bad faith but because they are not able to communicate adequately and those things are things that are learned mm -hmm. you know firstly we have a background in cameroon where someone gets up in his house and he's like okay i want to open up a business he doesn't have the business background he doesn't have, you know, what it takes to open the business. So when he gets into partnership with other people, it's difficult for him to communicate in a business savvy manner, you know, how to solve his problems. And at the end, they always have disagreements. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam Sandra Batebisang. I want us to follow this report. Viewers of Seven Television were just done the first part of the program. Well, let us see what Brice Gossok has for us concerning the digital economy that African countries want to engage into it fully. Brice Gossok. Avec des milliards de données échangées par seconde dans le monde, le numérique constitue un emploi de thé le moteur central de l'évolution humaine. Une transformation digitale mondiale à laquelle ne peut se soustraire le continent africain qui, au cours des journées TIC et numériques, a permis aux experts de la zone de faire le déplacement de la capitale camerounaise pour redéfinir davantage l'Africain du XXIe siècle au travers des dynamiques opérées par celui-ci dans le digital. Je vais partager avec vous certains, euh, certains développements qui projets qui vont nous projeter vers l'année 2025. Et c'est ce que nous faisons déjà aujourd'hui pour préparer l'avenir. Un enjeu crucial à l'ère de l'industrie 4.0 des objets connectés, l'Afrique en général et le Cameroun en particulier, se doivent d'accélérer l'entrepreneuriat et l'innovation numérique pour arrimer le développement du continent à l'inamovible procédé d'intelligence artificielle. On essaie de transposer l'intelligence humaine euh, vers les ordinateurs qui sont capables de travailler encore ces idées, enfin ces procédés un peu plus rapidement que l'être humain. Un défi qui passe par une mutation profonde des structures et surtout de la superstructure des Africains. Thank you, Bruce Gozok, for that wonderful and excellent report. Talking about the digital economy, each and every country now in the world is trying to make things more easier for the citizens. Even the digital market is something that countries do appreciate. 
Viewers of Seven News Television, this is your program expert. With us here is Madame Sandra Acharya Bati Bisson, the coordinator of your Enterprise Europe Network Cameroon. She's going to tell us more about Cameroon and Europe economic cooperation. Madame Sandra Bati Bisson, you followed that report by Briz Gozog, and we're talking about digital economy. We are talking about cooperation. The European countries have gone so far when it comes to digitalization and Cameroon is trying to take a step forward. How far do you think this should go? The digitalization of our economy? Um, I mean, for our economy to become digital, I think it's, it goes without saying. Okay. No economy in the world where we are right now can succeed, you know, without including that aspect, the aspect of, you know, being uh, digital. So I think, like I said again, uh, we, we need to get to a point where our government needs to understand that you need certain parameters for our economy to move forward. In this time and age, it is very, very strenuous that, and very surprising that a business person in Cameroon cannot get information on how to create his company online. Okay. Those are things that slow down our, our, our economy. You want to do business with another business person where you cannot get adequate information on that. Things that normally should have been gotten in 10 minutes or in 5 minutes or in 30 minutes, we end up getting them in a week. All of that are things that strain our economy because we have refused, you know, to integrate fully the technology or to include you know digital economy into the aspects of our economic growth so it goes without saying that we cannot emerge as a developed country without including you know that uh, di digitalization we are talking of cameroon and europe economic cooperation don't you think it's just like a the battle between the uh, a goat and an elephant where the elephant is right up there and the goat is trying to enter into partnership when we know that uh, the elephant the goat can never meet the elephant um you know most people would see a glass half empty mm -hmm. i would prefer to see the glass half full. half full i would prefer to see the glass half full because let me give uh, an, a typical a typical example of you in your house with your junior brother mm -hmm. If you have a senior brother that is always used to giving punches, what happens? The junior brother from the beginning is scared and doesn't give punches. But if the senior continues, when the junior gives two or three punches, after a while he becomes stronger. Yeah. If the senior brother continues, bet me after two or three years, they will start fighting. And if the senior brother is not very careful, the junior might beat him. Yeah. What I'm saying is that you can deal with somebody who has or who, who comes from a position of strength mm -hmm. you might look small in some aspects but you're definitely not small in all aspects for example they already have the technology that it is, is needed for them to move forward but then we have the raw materials without our raw materials they have nothing to transform yeah that's true what we should be thinking about is how do we make our our contracts or our, our partnerships profitable for our raw materials to make sense it still beats my imagination that we have the raw materials but the prices of the raw materials are determined by the people who don't own the raw materials yeah we give it to them they transform and sell it to us 10 times the price, the price of what they yeah. bought it from us that is where we should be looking at because when we talk of position of strength what is the strength without raw material all your technology goes into water mm -hmm. we have the strength we just choose not to use our strength so i don't want to look at it as if you know cameroon is not from uh, is not at a position of strength we are we just are not using what we have to be able to bargain properly so if we understand what we have if we understand the power that we have then at that time when we bargain we'll be able to bargain to say okay if you don't take our cocoa for 5,000 per kilo, we're not selling it to you. But right now they're telling us, okay, if you don't give for 500 francs, we're not buying. So we should be able to reverse the table to say, okay, now let's sit at the table. You have what I need and I have what you need. Mm -hmm. So somehow we're not talking from a weak and a strong. We're talking from people who have things that can be exchanged. And if we can get into proper negotiations, then 
we are, we, are, we, are, we are good to go. For me, we should just take all the old treaties that we had before independence, throw them through the window, and now sit and negotiate, you know, like equal partners. Are uh, you talking of raw materials and technological development? Of what use is the raw materials if the technologies are not there to develop them? I mean, it goes both ways. At what use are the machineries and the technological and all the technology if we don't have the raw materials? First, the raw materials makes more sense with or without technology because if I have my cocoa, if I have my banana, if I can't transform it to something, I can eat it. And what if, and what if it if you get um, uh, bad in the bushes and no, but the, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that I can eat it. it can, I can take it right now. The problem is not taking it from the bushes. I can be taking it from the bushes manually, so I will not be taking a big quantity. But then, if I don't get into an agreement with you, yeah. I can eat the cocoa. The reason why you man beings are living is for shelter, uh -huh. is for clothing. You know, I would eat some, and I would exchange my cocoa with your plantain. I will exchange my cocoa with your red oil, so I will have a mixture of all the food. Mm -hmm. I will exchange my cocoa with, I don't know, your timber to be able to make my house, and I will still live properly. But the person who has all the technology and doesn't have raw material, how does he eat? At the end, they need us more than we need them, but we just don't know how to bargain or how to negotiate. And finally, we get, you know, a deal which is not commensurate to the energy, to the power that we have. So you know, as a specialist, what is your own suggestion to get out of this mess? Uh, my suggestion to get out of the, the mess, I don't know if I'm going to call it the mess. The first thing is that we have lots of treaties that are tying us down. And that's what the, the Cameroonian population doesn't know. Most times, the government gets to sign conventions not because they think those conventions are beneficial to them, but because they have other conventions that have been signed before those conventions, that makes it impossible for them not to sign the present the ones. The present ones, okay. So the first thing I think is that we forget about all those conventions and start afresh. It means we don't have anything tying us down because I believe that these countries have used us enough. I believe that the, the not only the Europeans, but everybody who, who came for negoci negotiations before took advantage of our weakness and got us into treaties that we did not have full bargaining power over. First, we kept all those treaties, all those things by the side. The second thing is governance. Mm -hmm. Governance is a big problem in Cameroon. And if we cannot solve the problem of governance, unfortunately, even if we have the best contracts, the best partnership agreements, the best conventions, we are not going to use them properly. Let me give an example. We have the Bureau de Mise en Niveau, which is called the Upgrading Office. How many Cameroonians know that you go there, they upgrade you, and they even give you money to run your business? Bureau de Mise en Niveau has not been able to upgrade 50 companies for the five years it's been here. It has had the budget to do so. Why is it not doing it? How many Cameroonians know that you have a no that is there to normalize your product, where you can do your Cameroonian soap or your Cameroonian chocolate, and a no would give you the right certifications where you can export out of Cameroon? How many Cameroonians know that you have Agence de PME, which is there for small and medium sized enterprises, which is there to advise you, which is there to solve your problems, for example, of digitalization, yeah. which is there to help you on different things? How many Cameroonians know the role of of the bank Cameroonese de PME. Cameroonians, we don't know things because we have a basic fundamental problem of governance. Yeah. Information doesn't flow. I come to your office for information. I need to give you money mm -hmm. to be able to get that information. So at the end, we have to have those things. We hear that there are billions of euros being spent for those things. The Cameroonian population doesn't benefit from it. If we can do those things, we sort out our governance issues. We throw out all the old strange conventions that we had. I think that we are good to go for proper negotiation. Let's go back to the ICAM, where you yes. belong. Uh, is ICAM having a board of director? Yes, ACAM has a board of directors. ACAM actually is made up of small and medium sized enterprises or companies which are which constitute the General Assembly. Yeah. And now the General Assembly votes the board of directors, which has a, a president, two vice presidents and ten board members. Okay. Now the board of directors is actually there to oversee the activities of the directorate. It means that the board of directors now creates 
uh, what they call the Direction General or the Directorate and different um, regional antennas which have employees. These employees are not ECAM members. They actually work for ECAM to be able to ensure that the policies that are being put in place by the General Assembly you know, are being executed on a day-to-day -day basis. So us, we are employees of ECAM, but we are not members of ECAM. So the board of directors hires, you know, the people who work with ECAM, the people who ensure that the, the policies are being respected, we try to solve the SME's problems, but the, the board of directors get all their, their, their support or their voice from the General Assembly which is made up of small and medium-sized enterprises. So, let me find out Sandra um, uh, Batebison. Yes. You are a member of uh, ECAM. No, Not I'm an employee. An employee of ECAM. Yes. How much is your salary? Uh, my salary normally is something which is discussed between the board of directors of ECAM and, and myself. Mr. Yes. Okay, so I don't so, need to know. No, you don't, <laughs> you don't need to know. But um, I think I, I, I earn what permits me to go out there every day and take care of the SMEs, what makes me move every day to ensure that SMEs are being heard in Cameroon, and I earn what is enough for me not to be able to be compromised, you know, to be able to take something and speak against the right or the voice of SMEs. So do the board of directors have salary at the end of the month? No, they don't. And how do they carry out their functions? The board of directors is actually uh, free. It's a service which is free. The board of directors, firstly, are companies that make up a, make up a cam. Okay. So they actually have a contribution to make to the smooth running of a cam. They don't get paid. How many years has a camp existed? A camp has been existing uh, a little above 10 years. Okay. It has been in, uh, in existence above 10 years. And I would like to say without you asking me that we have had a very, very, very successful battle with uh, integration with the government. You know, a couple of years, um, it's been, it has been like policy all over the world for the government to integrate the private sector in their discussions. Yeah. And that is what we have struggled to do, and I think it's a big plus. We have been able to integrate into the government system where maybe we are not heard enough for policies to be changed because of what we see. But at least we can say in all the ministerial departments and at the level of the presidency, at the level of the prime ministry, there can be no important discussion that has to do with SMEs or the economy without us being present. I think it's something which is a good is a good step that we have taken. It's something which did not exist before. Before it was difficult for any government person to even hear that the private sector wants to give a contribution. But now our contributions are being taken into account. Not as much as we would like but at least we are more than 50 percent you know from where we were from the beginning so i think that is a positive thing which i really wanted uh, to to bring out you know i'm so surprised the way you are talking about the economy of cameroon with a lot of emphasis on uh, talking about a smaller medium sized enterprise well uh, madam uh, sandra batebisong let's follow this report viewers of seven news television let's follow this report by amandine Gongang, one of the interns of Seven News, talking about milk. Le constat est pour le moins clair ici. Sur ces étals du marché Acacia à Yaoundé, l'on observe la présence en masse de nombreux produits laitiers d'origine étrangère. Une fraise qui illustre à aisance la réalité du secteur laitier au Cameroun. Face à cette déchéance de la consommation laitière locale, les populations de la localité de Louguéré, département du Mayolouti, région du Nord, ont tenu à présenter le savoir-faire en matière de transformation laitière au cours de la journée marquant la célébration mondiale du lait au Cameroun rendu à sa première édition sous un thème fort évocateur, contribution du lait à la sécurité alimentaire. Cette occasion me permet, me permet effectivement de faire connaître le lait de faire connaître son importance et son rôle au plan socio-économique et nutritionnel. Connaître les activités liées au lait, à l'industrie du lait, 
mais également de faire connaître les bienfaits du lait dans la sécurité alimentaire et nutritionnelle, d'où le thème choisi pour cette célébration. Avec une production mensuelle estimée à près de 3 millions de mètres cubes, pour une demande sans cesse croissante et évaluée à 460 millions de mètres cubes au cours de la même période, les besoins des populations continuent de faire face à la production insuffisante des éleveurs. La filière laitière autrefois était méconnue et n'était que l'affaire des éleveurs nomades. Mais, sous votre impulsion, cette filière est sortie de l'Orient. Nous osons croire que dans un futur non lointain, la filière lait prendra un véritable envol au grand bonheur des éleveurs. Les difficultés qui n'ont tout de même pas empêché le docteur Taïga, ministre de l'élevage, de la pêche et de l'industrie animale, de confronter les participants venus, nombreux, célébrer cette grande messe. Ces animaux sont ici, à l'idée. Et ils s'alimentent bien, selon ce que nous a dit le directeur. Nous le verrons tout à l'heure. Ici, à Lougueré, se pratique également l'insémination artificielle. Nous verrons cela dans les tableaux tout à l'heure. La célébration de cette journée nous permet de venir vérifier, de venir nous rendre compte de ce que les stands laitiers, nous avons des produits laitiers au Cameroun. Nous rendre compte de ce que ces vaches qui sont là s'acclimentent bien. Des mots c'est flatteur, mais qui notent pas le caractère non compétitif des produits laitiers locaux face à la déferlante des produits importés, moins coûteux et parfois de meilleure qualité. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Amadim Gongang, for that report talking about milk and oh, you know, you've seen viewers of Seven News Television. If you are just if you are just switching on your television set, this is your program known as Expert. Today we are talking about Cameroon and Europe economic cooperation. Is it a fruitful one or one that is not really fruitful? A specialist from Enterprise Europe Network Cameroon, Madame Sandra Batebisso, who is here with us to tell us more about that. Yes, uh, Madame Sandra Batebisso, you were talking about governance and we are talking about Cameroon. Europe, economic cooperation, bad governance and good governance, how does that work for a better economic cooperation? Um, governance is the key. Governance yeah. is the key because without good governance, then you can't, you can't first of all be a better person if you have bad governance. How much more dealing with some other person? For us to be able to be competitive at the level of the international scene, we should first of all be competitive at the level of the local scene. Yeah. And all of that has to do with governance. Governance would ensure that information is being shared to the right people at the right time and with the right content. Yeah. Governance would ensure that we have what we require at the time which is required. Because one thing Cameroonians do not understand is the concept of time. Yeah, that's true. Where somebody thinks that, for example, if you have your payment which is due, and you have to get paid in 30 days. He thinks that he can keep your bill for one year and it's still okay. Not knowing that one year is enough to destroy any business, especially if they start small. Small, that's true. So if we have good governance, you know, policies in place, it will make it possible for someone to know, okay, when I get into this business, this is what is expected of me. This is what is expected of the person I'm doing business with. This is when I get paid. Right, yeah. So you can be able to do your business plan and know with my projections, year one, I am at this level, year five, I am at this level. But right now with bad governance, everybody flows with the wind. We don't do any projections that make any sense because they don't work. If you cannot project where your business is going to be locally in five years, how do you know when you're ready to, 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 to work with an international partner. So governance is something which for us to be able to, to, to start doing business, for us to be able to speak with our partners, you know, from Europe and from any part of the world, even from Nigeria or Mali or Senegal or whatever, if we do not have good governance policies, 
put in place we have a problem it's not only at our level but even at the level of the people who want to do business with us many people have had situations where they come to cameroon pay their hotels in hilton stay there three months and cannot get a document which they were supposed to get in yeah. two days many people have come with money in their bank accounts ready to finance projects in cameroon but have gone back with that money because they haven't been able to get the necessary licenses and agreements which they require to do that business all of that is governance so with governance we make ourselves unable to do business but also we make the person coming to do business unable to trust us unable to trust our society enough to invest his money in us are we attributing that to the incompetence of the government officials or corruption within the cameroon milieu incompetence corruption bottlenecks all of that is is, is what i call governance in yeah. the whole so i mean we, we we cannot be talking about governance if we put aside corruption if we put aside, you know, the, the bottlenecks, if we put that aside the, the, the laxity, the lukewarm attitude, you know, of, 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 of our civil service, if we put aside the ideology where we have, we are the only country on earth where a civil servant is richer than a businessman. All of those things are the things that when you put together, it's governance. A country where a person who has ordinary level will qualify for a position over a person who is uh, a professional in that field only because you come from a particular region or you have a particular kind of name all of those things are, 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 are the issues of governance and they are the things eating this country right to our roots uh recently our president went to china with some other African country presidents do you think it's a good thing for the African countries to shift from Europe now to the Asian countries for a cooperative ties? Um, I will be a bit controversial on this. Okay. I think that at this point in our lives, we should neither be with Europe nor with China, we should be on our own. Okay. Because a child who doesn't practice to stand on his feet and always needs that adult who holds his hand will probably have a disadvantage where he will grow never knowing how to stand mm -hmm. we should be able to take the bulls by the horn to say okay at this point we need to develop ourselves we need to first stand on our feet to be able to negotiate properly with you yeah i don't see any reason why we are leaving one colonial master to another colonial master <laughs> for me going to china is like saying okay we're tired of the european way of colonizing us now we are preferring the chinese way of colonizing us yeah. because the chinese may come with the innovation and the technology which is required but one thing i have learned from the chinese the chinese will never teach you how to do that thing they will bring their money they will write all the manuals in chinese they would come with their chinese laborers they would do it and they will go away even for you to do maintenance you have to call them okay. it means that we are just shifting our slavery from one slave master to another at this point we should be able to close our borders and close everything and say okay now we are focusing on ourselves we will first grow when we have grown and we can negotiate with you we will come back and we will negotiate for me either europe or china well we have to deal with it because we have to deal with it and we go back to the old policies that tie us but for me the ideal situation is be on your own grow first then you can sit on a negotiating table are you trying to make me understand that uh the African countries are looking at the Europeans or the Asian people as more superior than the Africans themselves? Yes, unfortunately they are. Unfortunately they are because it's, it's unacceptable as a country that we have to at each time take crumbs from other countries. Mm -hmm. Because the kinds of agreements or the kinds of partnerships that we sign in Cameroon, when you read the footprints, when you read the details, you get so angry with yourself. If you do not look at someone as superior, why don't you negotiate properly with him? That's true. If someone brings his money and brings you all the terms of negotiation of, of negotiating or of negotiation, it means you're looking at him more superior. Most clear, that's true. We we never tell them these are the terms, this is what we want. 
we never tell them you know what if you're coming to cameroon to build roads you should be able to follow the emo and higher local level we never tell them this your machinery will not enter cameroon if your flyers or if at all your manual is written in english, english it means we consider them as, as superiors whatever they give us whatever crumbs they decide to give us we take it look at the immobile de l'emergence i was very very disappointed when last two weeks we went there and all the four elevators were not working <laughs> there is nobody in cameroon who knows how it functions so somehow we have to look for another contract for another chinese company to come and to teach us or to fix it for us and still collect money when they were building you know that building why do we put it in the clutches of the contract to say when you put this elevator you have to train cameroonian engineers on how to fix it when it gets bad we have a lot of know-how in cameroon we have a lot of brain power but somehow we have the poverty mentality where we see <laughs> ourselves so small yeah and at this at that time we give now you know our counterparts the upper hand to be able to have very bad deals with us and get away with it all right so thank you very much uh, madam sandra bate bison let's follow this report by one of our intents he's a uh, lavrazin esamba viewers of seven news television let's get this report by an intent Des machines dont l'efficacité est vantée, un personnel aguerri et rompu à la tâche, voici des atouts attribuables à l'imprimerie du Cameroun. Quand il y a ouverture du dossier, quand ça arrive à notre niveau, on essaye de suivre selon la commande du client. Et on se rassure du fait que c'est ce qu'il a demandé qu'on lui produit comme document. Elecam a procédé à une répartition. L'imprimerie nationale étant la seule au Cameroun et probablement dans la sous-région Afrique centrale possédant des machines dédiées à la fabrication d'enveloppes, nous ont confié la production des enveloppes. À côté de cela, il y a un, une brochure intitulée « Le cadre juridique applicable à l'élection présidentielle ». Avec une clientèle, dit-on, à tous les coups satisfaits dans l'État du Cameroun, l'on s'attendrait à ce que l'entreprise publique, chargée entre autres, d'imprimer le journal officiel, l'étiquette de péage, les documents d'État civil ou encore des feuilles de composition d'examen et concours au Cameroun, soit la coqueluche du secteur et face des envieuses, que non, outre les aérés de salaire régulièrement décriés, il y a que l'imprimerie nationale doit avaler, et avec le sourire, la mère pilule de la concurrence, pire, de la préférence à peine voilée, de son principal client, quel état du Cameroun, pour d'autres imprimeries nationales et même internationales. Le pouvoir discrétionnaire du directeur général des élections de dire Sopecam et Imprimerie Nationale sont des sociétés d'État sous la même tutelle du ministère de la Communication. Donc, ils ont jugé utile de leur donner la production des bulletins de vote et de campagne. Et à nous, ce que je viens de citer, cela ne veut pas dire que nous n'aurions pas pu. Non, loi s'en fout. Je n'ai pas envie d'égratigner personne, mais lors d'une élection qui avait connu des problèmes, parce qu'ayant été entièrement confiée à la Sopecam, on a dû faire appel à l'imprimerie nationale à la dernière minute pour que une semaine plus tard le scrutin soit reprogrammé. Le potentiel humain et matériel de l'imprimerie nationale du Cameroun semble donc peu exalté, commandant la structure, à jouer au mieux les seconds rôles, au pire, les sapeurs-pompiers. Thanks very much, Isama, for that report talking about the ballot papers and the envelopes for the 2018 sorry, presidential election. Uh, Madame Batebisong, we talked about uh, the bank of small and medium sized enterprises in Cameroon. Do you think that bank itself really exists or it works? Uh of course the bank exists it exists in 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 more than two regions in cameroon mm -hmm. it exists uh in yaoundé already at uh Ron Point Lonka. yeah i know so it exists i know many people who are customers in uh, the bank the payment including myself so of course the bank exists in theory that's what i when i'm talking of existence no the bank exists it exists not in theory it exists in practice 
The bank, the PME, has already had to give lots of loans to Cameroonian SMEs. Can we accept the fact that uh, the bank is a bit selective to those they give the loans to? I mean, all banks must be selective to those okay. they give loans to. A bank, in as much as it's the bank that has finances from the government, a bank is a business. Okay. For you, you can't just enter a bank and say, give me five million and the bank gives you five million. There are certain prerequisites which are required for you to be able to have a loan. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most Cameroonian business people do not want to follow, you know, all the, 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 the due process to be able to get loans. And we have had many situations where banks have had to close because people take money and they cannot yeah, refund. The bank should be able to do due diligence. Are you a, a business that is tangible, that is, that is sustainable? What is your business idea? What are you selling? What are you seeing in your business plan? Or what are you seeing in your reimbursement plan? Can you be able to give back this money in five, ten years, or in two years, or in two months, depending if it's a long term, medium term, or short term loan? So, yes, of course, if you don't have the proper project, you know, that is bankable, then I don't see why the bank should be able to give you a loan. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bada Bati Song, for accepting our invitation this afternoon. Our viewers of Seven News Television, like I always say, anything that has a beginning surely has an end. Your program, The Expert, is ending today, but Seven News is not ending. Keep on watching Seven News. This program is successful because of the people working with me. You have the cameramen, you have the editors, you have the guy who operates the button behind me for all you people to see us at this point in time. Thank you very much. Keep on watching 7 News as our program continues on air. Bye for now.